Today's topic is hierarchical condition categories, otherwise known as HCCs. HCCs, simply put, is a risk adjustment model that uses an individual's demographics and all their diagnoses to determine a risk score. And that risk score is a relative measure of how costly that individual is expected to be throughout the year. There are 78 HCCs comprised of more than 3,500 diagnoses. Some HCCs rank higher than others and will eliminate lesser codes. For instance, if you had diabetes with a chronic condition, you're obviously excluded from the HCC diabetes without a chronic condition. Now, some HCCs are additive. More on that in just a minute. These special HCCs add an additional risk score. For instance, COPD has a risk score of 0.346, CHF has a risk score of 0.368. If a patient has both, they get the additive HCC, namely called COPD slash CHF, that gives them an additional risk score of 0.259 for a total of 0.973, much higher than the original risk scores. As we said before, an individual's HCCs are based on their demographics and their diagnoses. Those diagnoses are grouped together into HCCs, which change from year to year. They may add a diagnosis to an HCC or they may remove a diagnosis from an HCC. But what's interesting to note is that a patient's risk score is based upon the diagnoses of the previous year. So what you diagnose this year will impact their risk score next year. So why is this important? Well, the ACO financial benchmarks are based on the expected health care costs of their assignees. And if you remember, risk scores are directly correlated to health care costs. So let's do a little math. If our 2014 ACO benchmark cost for a non-dual beneficiary was $8,374 and their risk score was a 0.671, their expected cost for the year would be $5,619. If they had a risk score of 1.801, that cost increases to $15,082. This higher predicted cost makes it much easier for an ACO to re realize shared savings. Let's look at a case study of this 75-year-old gentleman. He goes into the doctor and he has the flu. The doctor codes the appropriate flu ICD-10 code, but this ICD-10 code does not fit into any HCC category. So his risk factor is solely based upon his demographics, which happened to be 0.694. Using that risk factor, you can expect his yearly costs to be $5,855. If that same man goes to the doctor with the flu, but the provider also diagnoses his diabetic condition, this diabetes groups him into an HCC-19 and it increases his risk score. He starts off with his initial demographic risk score of 0.694. The HCC-19 has a risk score of 0.118, which gives him a total score of 0.812. You can notice that this changes his estimated yearly cost of care to almost $7,000. Let's do one more. A typical 85-year-old woman comes in for the flu, complains of her diabetes and respiratory problems related to CHF and COPD, and the provider codes the appropriate ICD-10 codes. Her demographic risk score is a 0.694. The HCC risk factor for diabetes, CHF, and COPD add up to a 0.832. But please note, she also gets the two additive HCCs, both diabetes CHF and CHF COPD. In total, her HCC risk factor is a 1.967, which changes her estimated cost to over $16,500. So where are we losing our HCC risk scores? For instance, in 2014, we had 126 people with diabetes with chronic complications that in 2015 had diabetes without complications. 
That's a loss and risk score of 0 0.250 for each person or over $2,000 in expected yearly cost. Also in 2014, we had 154 people that had the diabetes CHF additive. In 2015, they did not. This indicates they either no longer had diabetes or no longer had CHF. Unlikely. That's a loss of 0 .660 in risk score or over $5,500 in estimated yearly cost. Here's another example. In 2014, 179 people had the CHF COPD additive HCC. In 2015, they did not. That's a loss of 0.616 in risk and over $5,000 in expected costs. In another example, we had 93 people in 2014 with a CHF renal additive HCC that did not have them in 2015. That loss is 0.739 in risk score. Don't forget, these are additive HCCs. So if they do not have the additive HCC, that means they also lost either the CHF HCC or the renal failure HCC. As one last final example, in 2014, we had seven people that were diagnosed with end-stage liver disease. But in 2015, they were diagnosed with cirrhosis or hepatitis. That's a significant difference in risk score in the loss of 0 0.600 for each individual patient. Let's look at diabetes for a minute. There are two diabetic HCCs, HCC 18, that's with a chronic complication, and HCC 19, which is without a chronic complication. HCC 19 has a risk score of 0.118 but HCC 18 has a risk score of 0.368, more than triple the HCC 19 risk score. There are six unique codes for HCC 19, and granted, these are the most common. There are over 170 codes for HCC 18, each uniquely identifying a chronic condition. If you take a quick look at our population, you can see that COPD, vascular disease, diabetes with and without chronic complications, heart arrhythmias, and CHF round out our top six and greatly outnumber those that follow. Here is a list of all the HCCs ranked by coefficient or risk score, the highest being pressure ulcer of the skin. Those that are highlighted in red, those are our ACO's top 10 HCCs. There are many situations in which the conditions are not documented or documented incorrectly. For instance, if applicable, coding major depression rather than depression, coding renal failure or diabetes with chronic complications. Also, breast, prostate, and colorectal cancers are frequently coded as history of rather than active. Protein calorie malnutrition is often overlooked, drug or alcohol dependency. There are many comorbid chronic conditions that need to be maintained year to year in order to keep the HCCs consistent. So what can I do? Simply put, you can code all the diagnoses. On Part B claims, you can submit up to eight diagnoses on a single claim. With Part A, it's virtually unlimited. What's important to note is that a diagnosis need only be coded once in the calendar year in order for it to count toward an HCC. It's also good to use the annual wellness visit to your advantage. Code their history in as much detail as possible. Thank you very much for spending some time with me to talk about HCCs. If you have any questions whatsoever, the North Country Initiative is here to help. Thank you.